Okay, Chapo, let's go. We're back. It's your Chapo for the weekend or for Monday tomorrow when you're probably listening to this. Um, let's just dive right into it. Obviously, we're here now, and probably like the, the thing, the big thing this week that we have to talk about. Uh, we're probably going to spend most of the show talking about is uh, the ta- this tax bill that's uh, winding its way through the halls of government, headed to the president's desk, uh, and is surely going to basically, I don't know, just perform the final coup de grace and whatever's left of, I don't know, democracy America? or America or civil society. Uh, I wish I had... I, something funny to say or or something more uplifting but like this is just this is all bad and the thing that i said earlier this week uh when it looked like it was going to pass is it's just to me like just a hallmark of just like a defeated culture and society that like we just seem like pretty much worn out by this and like the class war is over and i feel like the the bad guys won right and this tax bill is the culmination of probably 30 to 40 years of uh, a right-wing movement in this country to steadily chip away at the welfare state and just transfer more and more of society's wealth into fewer and fewer hands. And uh, they've pretty much done it. Yeah, I mean, like, look, this thing was always going to pass. It was always going to pass because, you know, the, you know, Five respected resistance Republicans, they suck out of the same teat as, you know, Senator fucking Yosemite Sam from Texas. So those donors told them they had to pass this. Because what is even the point of a Republican president or Congress if you can't pass this piece of shit? It's their last ditch effort at wealth transfer. It's their last ditch effort in beating down people so much they can't even stand up. And yeah. people said, like, oh, you know what? Right, rightfully so. They said the Democrats could have done more. They could have always done more. But the thing is, the only person that could have stopped this fucking thing is if Stephen Paddock had a <laughs> season ticket pass to the Congressional Softball League. I'm serious. That's the only way because no mat, no mat, no level of congeniality or phone calls or anything means as much to Susan Collins as donor money. It, nothing means as much. Uh, as a post-retirement speaking gig or fucking no-work book or whatever the fuck Jeff Flake is going to do, it does to him. Yeah, and that's so sobering to see because the, th- the, the thought always was, the conventional wisdom was, well, yeah, you know, they want to work for their donors, obviously, because they need to be able to fund their campaigns, but at the same time, there are certain things they can't do at the risk of inciting popular opposition that would overcome even a well-funded campaign but these dudes just fucking took a fire hose piss on the third rail of politics here cutting medicare medicaid going going whole hog to just saying yes we're transferring wealth from poor the poorest people in the fucking country to the richest people on earth and in the history of earth and we're going to give them even more than they've ever had and you would think well wouldn't they be afraid of the reaction of that but clearly, they have made the calculation that having their donors in, at their back and, and giving them money is more important to securing and maintaining power than actual voters. Because they've clearly done the work and are continuing to do the work of gerrymandering and voter suppression and demor- just demoralizing people that, that competitive elections are sort of going away. And as such, the only thing that's going to matter is whether you have the money to sort of outgun whatever Yahoo Honda dealer with a fucking Confederate flag tattoo on his forehead who runs against you in the primary, because that's the only thing you have to worry about. I mean, we'll see. I feel like when uh, Trump was coming in, I kind of looked at the world around me during 2016, and I I take a very unscientific method, and I look at... uh, you know how much money BuzzFeed is spending on this, or how much uh, how much money Netflix is going in debt, and you look around and you see this bubble of fake cheap credit rolling around. The same thing that we saw from two thousand three to two thousand eight, and you know that's the kind of economy we had. We had a jobless recovery for the two thousand eight recession, and we uh, we solved the bleeding by just shooting a thirty rope nut of fake money on everything, where there's Nothing actually created, uh, value is just declared, and things are willed into existence by 10 figures of debt that mean nothing to private enterprise. And it's totally unsustainable. And I thought that 
maybe one of the silver linings with Trump was that the crash was always going to come. And if it came under Hillary, we would get like a wave of competent, horrible blood and soil fascists very quickly two years in. But now with the tax bill, I feel like they've sort of took an EpiPen or a testosterone or an adrenaline shot and just jammed it into this zombie economy. So we'll see. Maybe the crash comes a year later than it does. Maybe it comes in 2020. I don't know what happens when that does, but you know, well, we're on borrowed like, time. They've, they've structured the uh, the the tax hikes for you know people making under like a hundred grand a year or whatever are going to kick in in two or three years. So if the Democrats do get in the way, out in twenty twenty, all the Trump shithead supporters would be like, raise my taxes. Yeah. As soon as they got yeah. in there, they just raise my taxes. Right. They always do. It depends, and on it's like and like these other like and then and the people who love this and they're like. Uh, they're like, if you like giving the government some money so much, why don't you just give them more than what you pay in taxes or whatever? Like, I have more money in my pocket. They're talking about like four hundred dollars, right? And <laughs> it's all, like, it, like four hundred dollars on one side weighed against like the entire infrastructure of like American civil society that's just being looted and just trashed. Also, right now. what the fuck do you think the government is going to spend that on? They'll instantly buy a new Punisher decal for a helicopter. <laughs> They're not going to give $400 to the poorest person, you fucking moron. And here's here's the thing like uh, the, the you know They're going to use it to airbrush Rex Tillerson's fucking pussy that lives in his neck. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to get Jared a new high chair. It's not going to anything that's actually good with these shitheads in charge. And if it was Obama, they would have it would have been like a new gift machine for the White House. <laughs> well, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people have asked, geez, this is crazy how no there's never really been any meaningful congressional action on climate change, even though the evidence for its you know, is serious uh, impending threat is pretty clear. And I got to think that this. Bill is really the biggest piece of climate change legislation we're going to see oh, yeah. in that this is the way for the wealthiest among us to get enough fucking money that they can create the private infrastructures to survive whatever catastrophe is coming. The fucking biodomes with laser dogs guarding the doorways and fucking moon bases for where fucking Elon Musk can like jack off into outer space and watch the nut get into a gravitational fucking field around the uh, moon or whatever. And that that's what the money is going to go towards. It's going to go to their nice private armies and fucking helicopters because they're not going to be roads anymore. It's going to be like fucking Rio de Janeiro. And I mean, that, that's that, and that's and they need as much money as they can before it all all the fucking wheels come off. And this is where, how they can get it. But the newspaper that uh, Jeff Bezos will publish inside Elysium, <laughs> it's going to be really good. There are going to be some scoops on the Baron Trump administration. <laughs> Democracy dies within the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Elon, new, uh, Elon, Elon Musk. And Rick and Morty are gonna <laughs> shoot brainwaves at each other. It's gonna be fucking epic. Well, here's the thing: like, you know, it, it's it's not like it's called. It's like this is a tax bill, but it's so much more than that. Like, this is the like I said, like as I said, like a thirty to forty year culmination of what the right wing and and the their their donors and the billionaires in this country, like the the Cokes or the Mercers or whatever, have been working for, which is a fundamentally like restructuring of American society that uh, just leaves the vast majority of people just com almost completely naked and vulnerable. And and like I said, this is why it feels like we're living in like a like we lost a war or something. That like this is just like well, we did, yeah, yeah, and they did it in like two weeks, which is frankly impressive. That's impressive hey. efficiency. But they got Mike Flynn for making a phone call too early. <laughs> we did it. Well, the dumbest man in America is going to be mildly inconvenienced for three months. We did it. I mean, uh, the, the example that uh, someone brought up that I think is um, a good one is what, uh, th like, this is now, like, the country writ large, what um, Sam Brownback did to Kansas when he became governor a couple years ago. We, he, you know, Arthur Laffer advised him on how to, like, you know, this is the old trickle down, like, just... Uh, Tax cuts will create revenue and pay for themselves. Mm. And what he did was just blow a fucking hole in the state budget, and it was a disaster. And they're same gonna, thing. Ronner is doing in Illinois. Yeah, they're gonna, and now they're they're blowing a hole through our entire country's budget. And like, but the thing is, like, that's it's intended to do that. Yeah, and it's intended to do that because, like, as Matt said, right after they're gonna pass this tax bill, next on the chopping block, Social Security and Medicaid. They're gonna privatize both of those. They're gonna cut them to the bone. Why? Because there's no money. We don't have any money. 
Yeah, our budget's we're been We're spending designed. ourselves to crazy. Yeah, yeah. We just fucking put a trillion dollars in money, just a literal transfer, a trillion dollars to the wealthiest people in this country. And there's all of a sudden, where'd the money go? We can't do anything. Oh, uh, my God. There's also many, many provisions in this tax bill that uh, directly attack uh, education, both public and higher. I mean, this is another Yeah, there's the Orrin Hatch. Orrin Hatch uh, put in a tax credit for if you send your kid to a religious school. So if you're looking to start a new Taliban, don't worry. The government is looking out for you now i believe I, I don't know exactly but i believe like this bill it, it cut deductions for like all higher education except for hillsdale college in michigan which is like the that got taken is the school that literally lets kevin d williamson be an honorary professor well they're the only one that invite him in but uh, <laughs> well, i think yeah, clown colleges should be exact <laughs> <laughs> that, that thing that got taken out but it was so funny it's like okay i'm the equivalent to that is in Hyde Park, the neighborhood I grew up in, and Barack Obama uh, studied uh, Sufism in, uh, <laughs> there is a Hotep health food store called Bon Santé, and it's a terrific store, and it has all types of great juices and amino acids, and there's like a <laughs> painting of Jesus Christ with an afro, <laughs> with the background is the Milky Way, and it just says, the cosmosis. <laughs> and it's like, if during the stimulus bill, A, the, the stimulus bill was just like, we're raising the marginal tax, right, on all income above half a million dollars to 75 percent and we're giving a uh, tax credit to bon Sante on 53rd street in hyde park that's how brazen it is but they don't give a shit and what's great is you know let's say kamala harris does win or fucking kirsten gillibrand or a you know al franken john conyers super ticket <laughs> wins in 2020 they will immediately work with these shitheads on fixing the budget deficit okay. because they will take them at their word about being deficit hawks again Absolutely. how many of y'all like a grand bargain what was so amazing is that I honestly don't think that the Republicans even understood how much things have changed in terms of accountability being totally destroyed by, by the fracturing of the electorate, by people tuning out or becoming hyper-partisan and not caring about details. Because remember, at the beginning of the year, it was Paul Ryan who convinced Trump, we got to repeal Obamacare before we do the tax cut because we're going to need to have a justification for, by we're going to be able to say that we're paying for the tax cut with the savings from getting rid of Obamacare. That was his argument. And then they tried it, and they couldn't, they couldn't get it to go. And then they're, they were just like, oh, we can just do it anyway? And no one actually gives a shit about the trillion dollars that we're adding to the debt? Holy fuck. Like, he, they didn't even fucking realize how far things had gone. And now they do. They're fucking kicking through the door, and they're realizing the wood is completely rotten. I mean, like, yeah, like the other thing that, that bears, uh, you know, underlining about all of this is like i feel like right after the election like when we recorded our right you know right after the election year zero show it was like in the pit of my stomach like you knew this was coming because like when the, if the right has power in this country this is what they're going to do because they understand power and power is about maintaining power and taking away the power of your enemies the democrats do not do that when they're in charge and i think it bears um contrasting uh, what the Republicans are doing with their uh, House and Senate and, and White House versus what the Democrats did in 2008 and 2009. These fucking pussies had a provision in Obamacare that people could sign up to vote when they went to exchanges and they fucking took it out because they were afraid it would look too fucking partisan. Yeah. He, he met with the fucking head of all the big five banks. And what did, it, what did he say? It was something like, uh, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking to uh, take away your free lunch. I'm not looking to take away this dog gyro. <laughs> it, it's, I mean, it, I it is amazing, but it's like, it's not that they're naive. It's that they don't give a shit. They don't, they they don't give a shit. Want, That's why they didn't. That, they don't want the things that they say they want. They don't want the things that their voters want. They and that, want. And their job is basically managing the expectations of people who they have no interest in actually seeing having their lives made better. And that was what the Obama years proved. Yes, they do have a congenital Sorkin ass fetish for. Uh, comedy and and procedure and that is built into the liberal worldview in a way that it isn't to conservatives and that does stop them because they are do genuinely believe this they've internalized a lot of that ideology yeah. but right. part of the reason they've internalized it is because that is part of the mechanism that keeps them from ever actually fucking accomplishing right. anything. it's irreconcilable with actual uh an actual ideology that you believe in to the extent that you're going to do whatever it takes to pass the legislation that fulfills that no because I, I as just we're talking about like uh, 
when people want to talk about the the limited uh, successes of the first two years of the Obama presidency, people will say, well, hey, they had 60 votes, but you know, two of those were guys like Max Baucus or Lieberman. They were basically they were being held hostage by these conservative Democrats. But that's because they had they had. They all agreed that they were going to go by the rules where they were yeah. going to need 60 for everything. But if you have 51 people in the Senate, and this is never talked about, and certainly never talked about when Democrats are in power, if you have 51 people in the Senate, you can basically do anything you want. Reid did that at one point, and McConnell famously did it in order to get Gorsuch on the Supreme Court. Right. Yeah. But they, but it, they, they won't with do judges, it. With judges, they'll do it, not with legislation. Yeah, they'll, they won't do it with legislation, even though they could. Yeah, they could have passed uh, with 51 votes. They had the votes for... A public option. They had the votes for card check, which would have doubled union membership in the private sector in the country. And they had the votes for the Dream Act. Do you think that? Do you think 2010 would have happened how it did? Do you think that 2016 would have happened if card check went through? No, but they. You know what? They don't want to hold on to the house, really. But hold they don't on, really though. want that? Oh God, no! The responsibility of actually holding power is so fucking bad because it threatens all of the members of leadership. Because then the expectations are made that they can't. They have no interest in actually fucking following through on, and that is that's a tension that has to be resolved some way. And the best way is to lose one of the houses, and then whoo, we don't have to worry about it anymore. I, but you know what? I'd have to say though, yes, if they'd done that, if they'd rammed everything through, uh, they would have been called. Uh, crazy radicals who didn't care about democracy and rammed things through in an undemocratic fashion. And as we know, because they were so careful with the Obamacare stuff, they didn't get called that by Republicans for eight years. <laughs> so it was, right. it was worth doing it that yeah, way. Yeah. Obama, they really gained a lot of goodwill and good faith from their opponents by being that responsible. The party elected a guy who got into politics by saying that he was born in Kenya. They don't give a shit. They don't. These fucking cocksuckers. Even after they passed they passed this insane bill, a bill on par with like the Tamir government, any authoritarian faux democratic government, this insane wealth transfer to beat down everyone. They were like, uh, yeah, but Obamacare was passed kind of late at night. They don't give a shit yeah. because they know what. Even the fucking National Review cucks, they know what politics is about. Well, I think I just want to read here from uh, leader of the Senate Democrats, Chuck Schumer. His, yeah. his, right, his, his reply right. to this. But the most anti-Semitic president in the world. Our general is speaking. Yeah. When he goes up there and he's like, I, I, the biggest tragedy of this bill is that I'm no longer friends with Donald Trump. It's like <laughs> fucking die. Like it is. I want to re I, oh. just read here from Chuck Schumer. This this is what he said uh, about, about the tax bill. He says he tweeted. Tonight, I feel mostly regret at what could have been. <laughs> tax Fuck you. Tax reform is an issue that is ripe for bipartisan compromise. Ooh. There is a sincere desire on this side of the aisle to work with the GOP, particularly on tax reform, but we have been rebuffed time and time again. But he's right about that because is their desire. donor class wants this fucking bill too. Yep. Their donors want less taxes on their ill-gotten gain as much as Republican donors do. So there is bipartisan support for it. It's just they want to they want to couch it and make it make it more middle class friendly. But at the end, it, they both have a, a vested interest in is seeing a, a massive wealth transfer to the to the upper percentages. But the Republicans had the numbers and are like, why bother with these assholes when we can just get everything and then get all the fucking donor money because we can actually get things done okay also in the democrats response to the tax bill uh, this is not kidding the, the senate democrats social media arm their social media oh, shop yeah, I know. put oh, out God. memes and videos of ronald reagan passing mm. tax reform he also oh. blew a hole in the fucking <laughs> deficit you fucking as, absolute as an cunt. appeal to bipartisanship and it's like Partisanship is why the Republicans control all three, three branches of government. They, there is no more bipartisanship. They're going to elect a fucking pedophile, you dumbass. Now, now Will, what, what were the memes? I, I enjoy memes. <laughs> it was just like uh, Ronald Reagan. Here, like, comes, just here, here, come, yeah. here comes that boy, and he's spilling arms all over all over a bunch of Nicaraguan Contras. Uh, and let's it, not forget the fact that Reagan's fat tax cuts that they're lauding because they were bipartisan set the stage for 30 years of wealth redistribution upward and fucking the stagnation of wages for actual working people. That was That's the, where it all started. Reagan, you can look Reagan, at the fucking chart. That was the first starving of the beast. That's where the Kansas blueprint came from. You fucking moron. Where do you think Arthur Laffer made his bones? One more thing. Uh, 
House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi Queen. Uh, described the tax plan with a crying emoji face to appeal. Like, You're 85 <laughs> years old. You were born in the middle of World War One. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Holy shit. You were friends with the Lindbergh baby. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Tell, tell us how this tax bill makes you feel in three emojis or less. I have to, uh, Carl Baer had a, had a blog post I thought was very important where he pointed out that this whole incident proves conclusively that incremental, the case for incremental reform that we keep hearing over and over again from establishment Democrats uh, is completely bogus and meaningless because the virtue of incremental reform that we're told over and over again is, well, yeah, it's not flashy and it, it's not what you want, but you make things slowly better for everybody. As opposed to if you're too radical, then you don't get anything accomplished. But look what happened. Everything that all those little slow uh, fucking incremental things that they did in those first two years of Obama, Obamacare, which, by the way, uh, repeal of the Obamacare magnate is in this bill, yes. and uh, and slightly higher taxes on, on higher earners and all that stuff, uh, that stuff is all gone now. It's gone. It might as well have never happened. If they had shot for the moon in 2009 and not gotten anywhere, we would be in the same position. But you know what might be different? People might have seen them standing up for big, bold, progressive changes, and maybe the uh, I, rape ogre isn't president now. <laughs> I've heard it said that, you know, uh, Republicans are losing 2018, and when Democrats take the White House, don't worry, they're going to repeal this bill. But you know how people say once you once you make an entitlement, it's, it's pretty damn near impossible to get rid of that entitlement. The same goes for tax cuts. In 2012, uh, Obama and the Democratic Senate, they made permanent most of the Bush tax yep. cuts. Yeah, 82% and the, and the, of and them. The same, and the same, we're going to get into this on the Democratic donor class soon. We're going to get into Haim Saban and his, the bar mitzvah he gave Jared Kushner. <laughs> but... Uh, you know, talk about entitlements. Okay, entitlements are tough to take away from people, but like normal people who have entitlements that they actually need that are human rights, you can take it away from them because you can just beat them down over generations and then just yank it from their weakened hands. But rich people, they have a pathology where there's a little bug in their brain that tells them they're going to be happier with $60 million than 50, even though they're just, they're, they live in a complete moral rot and their lives are hell and they're fucking monsters because that is a legitimate addiction to want to hoard money like that. You think they're going to give it up? They've already gotten to this point. No, they actually have up. fucking money to make sure that whatever happens in the future is not going to they, affect them. They want more. If they they want it all. They want it all. Yep. And the rest of us will have to bow and scrape for them for have the privilege of working for them. Unless we get No, here's the thing. The, the, the other thing I want to talk about like in, in, in with regards to like the Democrats utterly weak responses because here's the thing they couldn't have stopped this from happening no right no absolutely like, like, not. like the, the, the the problem is like they, they could have done things like years ago they could have just chosen to be a, like a, a party that represents the interests of their voters they made that choice a long time ago so we're we're here now at the very in the very present term they could they probably couldn't have stopped this bill their response to it is just so weak and telling because it's just like I want you to like think about contrasting the Democrats' response to this abomination of a tax bill that, like I said, is just indescribably bad for everyone in so many ways. Contrast their response of the chance of Chuck Schumer or Nancy Pelosi, who just like I'm just we're very disappointed. Uh, we tried to be polite and we were rebuffed at every turn. Compare that to that video I know a lot of you saw online this week of Jeremy Corbyn doing a video yes. for Labor where he said. The bankers at Morgan Stanley have described uh, labor uh, under like under us as, as a threat. Guess what? They're right. <laughs> we are a threat to you. Uh. And guess what? They're a threat to your lives. So you're goddamn right. Imagine, imagine, like who? Are, who is the Democrats' enemy? If you yeah, have to ask them, who, uh, who's well, their uh, enemy? Rude, uh, Trump. Rude. And rudeness. Uh, Trump and Russia. Va valet, uh, I, I know. Uh, Chuck Schumer could make that video, but it's about valets who uh, make uh, night owl blunts in his car <laughs> when he's going to fundraisers. He makes a big video where he's like, I, I saw blunt wrapping at the at the bottom of that that uh, that uh, mat on my car was a gift for my daughter's wedding. Who are they identifying as the enemies in our society? And until we have a politics, until there's a political movement in this country that says we can either have a democracy in the richest nation in the world that provides a decent quality of life for everyone, or we can have billionaires. 
but we can't have both. Th- uh, that is... Uh, I like good billionaires. <laughs> Donald gives good billionaires a bad name. And here's the thing. Like, all the Democrats... Oh, die, F- please. And finally. all the liberal institutions that underwrite them... Uh, Alex Perrine made this point, and I think it's exactly right. Until they realize that they will be the target of a relentless rat-fucking campaign by these people who have no regard for the decorum and decency that they so believe in so lovingly, until they realize that they're going to be the targets of this kind of shit, until they just take away the money from the fucking Robert Mercers of the world. Take away their fucking money. This shit is going to keep happening. Yeah, I mean, look, the other party is... I cannot reiterate this enough... They're voting for a guy this month, and they're going to go, all of them are going to say, he did that pedophilia in the 70s. It's okay. Yeah. that's They're all making that conscious choice. You can't, they've made up their mind because they hate you, and they like the people that hate you. Yeah, and they will, and they and as long as, as, as Will said, as long as they have the money, they're going to pay James O'Keefe to dress up like Pepe Le Pew and try to seduce your house cat for and some fucking is, weird it, video. It doesn't matter how fucking dumb and ham-fisted and obviously stupid and fake all this shit is. It will work. They got the Democrats to fucking defund Acorn because mm. of that, that fucking cunt. Yeah, so uh, an organization that actually helped... Register. Reach out, register to vote, and, and, and was one of the leading lights who understood that the housing crisis was coming, and they got got. They got got, yeah, but a, a, a ludicrously acorns. edited video. And they and fired, then, and they fired Sherry, Sherry Shirley Sherry, on too. Another, on another edited video, because as soon as it happened, they panicked. They shot a bunch of squid ink out of their assholes, and they fucking realized, oh, this is going to look bad. Oh, man, people, they're going to be mad at us. No shit, they're going to be mad at you. They're going to be mad at you no matter what you fucking do, you morons. Whereas what? They have the, they have the pedophile senator coming up. And remember, their, remember Mitch McConnell, when the first accusations came out and the first polls said that he was looking like he might not win, they were like, well, if he gets, if he gets elected, uh, we're going to look into kicking him out of the Senate. <laughs> now, now that he's in the lead now in polls, McConnell says, I'm going to let the people of uh, Alabama decide. <laughs> yeah, yeah the, no shit. Like, that was ever not on the agenda. You know what? It's because these people, like the liberals exist on this continuum where they think that like the other side will be embarrassed when they see them at cocktail parties and they're not yeah they don't give a shit they're not you i i think it's instructive to contrast the resistance to this bill to the mobilization against the obamacare repeal which was successful with a margin of one vote and the messaging against the Obamacare repeal, which was, I'll call your senators, call these senators, and that sort of thing, it was straightforward. It was, this is going to increase the number of uninsured in the country. Uh, it's going to take away this entitlement. And this time around, the messaging I saw, the mobilization against the tax bill, it was not as potent. And the messaging, was, was it was scattershot, right? I saw... Uh, Planned Parenthood talk about fetal personhood language in the bill. I saw a lot of people talk about the drilling in Anwar provision. And it occurred to me that the Democrats no longer have a language that is useful to describe what is literally class warfare. They don't have a a political discourse that, like you say, identifies actual enemies whom you should hate and whom you should fight to defeat and defeat. Excuse me, but they very clearly pointed out that it would actually increase the deficit. That's it. That's (laughs) all they have because they have fundamentally bought that conservative right-wing frame. They are still so scared of Reagan and all of this shit and the Laffer curve that that's all they can talk about. The deficit, uh, let uh, let us read the bill, please, before we, you know, before it passes (laughs) anyway. uh, Yeah, yeah, part of that is like, okay, one reason the Obamacare repeal mobilization was successful was because there was a precedent there was, at least for a few years, there was a precedent of this thing, tangible thing that they were going to take away because they actually, as lacking as it was and how easily it's going to die soon, Obamacare was something they gave people. When was the last time Democrats gave people like a sheer, just unambiguous, they had an unambiguous economic program, an unambiguous piece of fiscal policy? that normal people could look at in their lives and say, oh, that time was better for me. They can't because the stimulus was this mess of public-private partnerships and loans for small businesses and fucking just, you can't figure it out. It was intentionally designed to hide the government's role. It was written, the language of that 
of the stimulus was that it was supposed to be invisible to right, people. Right, because they've spent Genius. 30 years Genius. they've spent 30 <laughs> years hiding their role because they're afraid Reagan's going to come back from the dead and they're afraid that people will notice that 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 maybe one sometimes they want to spend more than the other party. So when the time actually come and came and it's like lay your dicks on the table. This is our vision of the world. What's your vision of the world? Their vision of the world is uh uh, sir, this is it. like. Did you see that article about Tom Perez's bullshit fundraiser? Where no. this fucking squ- <laughs> no. Tom Perez, by the way, has he had a sore throat his whole life? <laughs> what the fuck is there a provision in the Democratic Party leadership that they all have to be dying and have been for fifty years? <laughs> he just got up there and talked about procedure. What the fuck? So you know when you and it's not even working. Even like. Even their Hollywood donor base of like Brian Singer isn't even do- donating to them now. <laughs> well, he has he has health problems at the moment. <laughs> you know, when you hear these goals, ate too much pizza. For civility, <clears throat> listening to both sides, being friends across the aisle, uh, you've implicitly accepted a right wing reactionary frame that says that politics is just about these petty grievances because the conservative frame, who are the conservatives' enemies? It's liberals, uh, pointy-headed college professors, Starbucks cups. It's trivial shit. So, of course, they could be lectured to reach across the aisle. They could even do it because their grievances are asinine. It has absolutely nothing to do with their day-to-day lives. But who are the Democrats' enemies? Is it Wall Street, which hedges its bets between both parties? Is it energy CEOs? Every Democrat elected in West Virginia owns a rickety coal mine. Is it big pharma like Joe Manchin's daughter? Is it recipients of big unearned inheritances like all of their kids and all of their donors' kids? You can't have this Frankenstein Democratic Party where we say, okay, we're, 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 we're going to have a huge, like a powerful donor base, but also left-wing politics. It's impossible. It's not going to exist. It's just basically powered through chicanery. And this is why, honestly, that, like, there's good reason for despair because it's just like, well, who the fuck else is there? Yeah, that guy. I mean, we're I mean? basically like, at a point where we're, we're tr- I mean, like we're we're trying to do something here, like to get our way out of this. But like, uh, you know, like I said, this sinking feeling that was in my stomach right after the election. It's like you knew something like this tax bill was going to come. Like I said, that is the the culmination. Uh, I said over and over again of a long drive to basically do away with whatever le- little threadbare. You know, pieces of the New Deal and civil society or a public sector is left over in this country, and just to make America more the lives of people more more precarious, more stupid, more cruel, and the lives mm-hmm. of the greediest, nastiest people even more greedy and nasty. And, you know, Dave Weigel and several others pointed out. You know, okay, you know, why why are people attacking the Democrats? Because none of them voted for this bill. I mean, I'm sorry, that's just the baseline behavior I expect is not showing up and signing on to it. But you have within the caucus, Bernie Sanders proposed an amendment uh, that would uh, prevent any automatic cuts that will be caused by this bill and this deficit spending to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And two Democrats, Mark Warner and I believe Tom Carper, showed up and voted no on it. And Mark Warner said afterwards, you know, listen, I've all, I was a member of the, the Gang of Six or Gang of Eight or whatever. You know, I'm big on entitlement reform. Mark Warner was almost Obama's vice president. Yeah. Uh, me, uh, me and Pete Peterson were uh, meeting with Kendra Lust and Riley Reed, and we're telling them to not do any more hardcore scenes until we take care of the deficit. <laughs> We don't want our kids paying this off. By the way, where the Riley, fuck? Riley, I was, love you. Where the fuck was fucking Pete Peterson and his fucking deficit reduction rap squad <laughs> during this fucking thing? He was sucking the stem cells out of an infant. <laughs> where, where where was fucking Akon and his and his Please no labels song on Chris. and his no labels song Chris, about the deficit no busting effects of this fucking tax bill? By the way. I wish they didn't have no labels. Deploy the capital steps. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, you guys, man, uh, what if the capital steps did a sing in during the voting, and you saw every yes turn to a no. I just like <sighs> we are all accelerationists now. Like, That's I, the basic. I, like, I, 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 I don't know what else to say. Like I, I like I. I, I, I hate that idea, but like you you want to you want to despair you want to you want to get even realer than this. Like I said, after this tax bill, what's next? Uh, Social Security and Medicare. Bye. Yeah. We say goodbye to those. 
oh, what's that on the horizon? Let's say that there is some like big political backlash at how horribly unpopular and nasty all this shit is. Oh, who's that? It's Mike Pompeo and Tom Cotton running our foreign policy who will do everything in their power over the next couple of years to start another massive fucking could, could war I, with could Iran. I, could I just say if there was one guy I could will into just spontaneously combusting to save the world, we're going dead zone, it's Tom Cotton. It's got to be That's the Tom Cotton, shit, uh, Tom Cotton, CIA head, a guy yeah. who basically, like, I read, yeah, I read. Maybe you saw this. I saw a piece about him. We're interview with him in the Times this week, where they asked him, like, what is your guilty pleasure? And Tom Cotton said, I run every morning, and I run every morning. I get up early and go jogging every morning, so I can reward myself by eating birthday cake every oh. day. What is he running from? A crawl space. <laughs> I, I, it's gonna be really. Psycho. It's gonna be lit when the CIA director Tom Cotton sends Ted Nugent to kill the Ayatollah with a fucking bow and arrow. That's you know that that person isn't human. I mean, those no. are the kinds of ads that that you should be running. They should be specific personal attacks on this individual and his family, and say this is not a normal human being whom whom you might see he is at a Costco or something. Dead eyed psychopath who's. Only thing that really gets him out of bed in the morning, other than fucking birthday cake, is the thought of starting another massive U.S. war in the Middle East, this time against Iran. And, and boy, oh boy, if you think fucking 2017 was a dumpster fire, just wait till 2018 and 2019 wait till, roll wait, wait till we lose and wait till uh, Iran starts hitting targets in America that fucking make, uh, make 9-11 look like... Uh, a, like a Jade Helm rehearsal drill. It's going to be bad. I mean, like, look, if you are Tom Cotton's sexual partner, if you, like, jack off with him on cam, if you <laughs> just anything... I don't know what can even take anyone down in America anymore. If Tom Cotton, like, he plays console games, but he hooks it up to that mixer that allows you to use a mouse and keyboard to cheat, that might work now. <laughs> just anything, please. T if you Tom, can pause Tom, Tom Cotton, Tom, do Tom it. Cotton, Tom Cotton... He live streams MMA on Twitch and pretends that he's using his the controller. Only people who would take, <laughs> take the only the people who would take down Top Cotton are Zufa's uh, copyright attorneys. Well, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, just um, we're all accelerationists. Yeah. At I, this I, point, you don't have to worry about the morality of oh, should I root for the worst to happen in the hope that it will accelerate the mobilization needed to to, to stop it. You don't have to worry about that. We're on that. We're I mean, in that it, timeline. It, it, in 2018, we will see you when we are now hosting the show in Iran. When we're the new Tokyo Rose. You keep, you keep saying that, Felix. We've we're not all on board with that, okay? Well, you're going to be. <laughs> talking about being an accelerationist. Well, it goes to show why you can't resist this 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 right-wing class warfare without an in, 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 in effective and monolithic working class party because the Democratic Party, uh, the members of the Democratic Party, the elected officials who are just the same running birthday cake eating creeps as Tom Cotton are just always going to be widely reviled. And uh, Matt, as you pointed out, uh, of course, these poor schlubs who won't benefit from this bill whatsoever, they're just going to get fucked by it. Of course, they should vote Republican because Republicans will still give them something they want. They're going to trigger the libs. Looking at the polling in this bill, the messaging against it was totally ineffective. You had... Uh, uh, a massive number of people undecided. They don't know anything about this bill. There was just no coherent opposition message. So people just who who had an opinion about it just relied on their pre-existing affiliations and grievances. And as we saw online, uh, the chuds are all uh, hooting and oinking for this bill <laughs> because it will trigger the libs. Oh yeah, no, you should. I mean, you should have seen it if you had like a tweet that if you're a social media big dick player and you had a tweet that did mad decent five figgies like I did very easily. It's no big deal for me. I do one every day, but all the replies to it from normal Republicans are like. Uh, it looks like you got a dose of vitamin to stupid. And it's like, do you realize you, your life is going to get worse in like a year? Like, not even that much time. Like, you just fuck yourself to give Bill, Bill Clinton a tax credit to buy his own pedophile airplane, you fucking but idiot. I, I will say, I, like, I can't really hate the chuds that much any more than I could hate a raccoon for scurrying around my trash. Oh, no, yeah, I mean, yeah. But the, those the really, people I, do. I hate the most 
are the the sensible conservatives who wrote all of these op-eds saying that, uh, oh, we're, you know, this is bad for the deficit, where it seems like the Republican Party doesn't actually care about uh, fiscal prudence anymore. And then the people who came out and said, um, well, you you need to be nice to John McCain. He's a hero. Can we talk yeah. about John McCain and his rotten family? Oh, oh my yeah. God. One, man, one of the... Arguably, the McCain family has taken more from the world than the Trump family. We should... It, it just over time, it's one of the worst families in the fucking world. We should do one segment every episode for every single senator in the rotten we family. Should, we should they're, do... They're all terrible. We should do, like, Stephen Colbert's segment where he, like, profiles an individual Better know district, a district. But we should do it for a cancer cell in McCain's body. <laughs> <laughs> One of the worst living Americans. Uh, he wasn't even thirty years old, and he already had a fucking he already had a fucking basement full of little Vietnamese skeletons. Absolute fucking monster through and through. And then in his entire public life, all he did because uh, DC journalists liked him personally. I don't know why, because he reminded them of their grandfather who would pull them aside and tell them a racist joke. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, no. Protect Megan though. Protect Megan. Queen. And Megan. Megan. By McCain the way, shout out. Fuck you, Megan. Sorry. Yeah. Shout out to. To uh, Ashley Feinberg, who uh, got in a little bit of a, a row this week when um, she tweeted, like responding to uh, John McCain's um, support for this awful tax bill, uh, wrote, congratulations to John McCain's wife and children on their upcoming tax-free inheritance. And people got mad because they're like, John McCain's dying. How dare you? And Meghan McCain like demanded that she apologize to her mother and shit. But uh, Ashley deleted it. And she did respond, but she responded in a way that I thought was very funny. And clever, and was like still basically twisting the knife. So Ma shout out to Megan. Ma Megan McCain came out with her fucking crocodile tears, saying, "You owe my mom an apology." Yeah, I mean, yeah you owe yeah. my mom an apology. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> she can dry her tears with the giant wads of cash she's gonna get. There is nothing more her awful husband who I guarantee you she hates because we know for Domino, a fact yeah. that he's a complete piece of shit to her. Oh, wait, wait, There's wait. all these stories about him screaming at her in public and humiliating her. He cheated on her. She probably cheated on her every day of his fucking life she hates him she's waiting for him to fucking die well, and then she gets 200 fucking million dollars to swim around in like scrooge mcduck when it's over she's gonna be fine hang on in cindy mccain's defense she's also a failed daughter heiress no it is a comprehensive that is the fail kid family because yeah. john's dad yeah. dad and grandfather were admirals and john couldn't even fly a plane for 10 minutes on the tutorial mode without fucking crashing Fucking Cindy, foul daughter, Megan, one of the biggest foul daughters who's just constantly shoved in our face. When her dad fucking keels over, we were talking about this before the show, she's going to start Hot Soup 2.0, but it's going to be called, like, The Steam after the steam <laughs> on a latte. Me Megan McCain just got engaged to that fucking Ben Domino. From, from ben Domino from The Federalist. And, like, people found after their engagement all these articles that Ben Domino wrote about Megan McCain fucking just insulting her. Yeah. Uh, it's he was just deeply like, contemptuous. Yo, yeah. yo, that is alpha game right <laughs> yeah. there. You know what? Long game someone Megan. in the Federalist. I wonder what kind of relationship she might have had with her father where a guy who is just being a mean creep to her all the time <laughs> attracts her. It's interesting. Well, you know what? If there is... I don't think Ashley owes Cindy or Megan an, an apology, but... You know, she, owes Cindy, me, she owes me an apology for deleting that tweet, frankly. Yeah. Can we talk about another uh, political fail daughter? Ooh, which one? I'm talking about... Chelsea Clinton, and I want to talk about a piece uh, courtesy of Bill Schur. Bill Schur is the brainworm king. Bill Schur, it's like we've never talked about him on the show before, but you know how like we'll make fun of articles that are like, you know who's the original Rosa Parks, Hillary Clinton? We're like, oh, that's stupid. But Bill Schur is like he's operating, he's living in 3017. Like all his articles are like, you know what? Actually, uh, Bill Clinton is a black woman. <laughs> and you're like, why not? Yo, Bill Shear rules. He's galactic brain. Yeah, from the he's, meme. Bill Shear will tell will tell you straight to your face that fucking Bob Rubin should run for president. <laughs> <laughs> he's the fucking king. He's uh, no, the king. So, so as we were talking about, Tom Cotton is going to go to CIA. He's currently a senator from Arkansas. And Bill Shear writes an article for Politico titled "Clinton Should Run for Sen Cotton Senate Seat." Ooh, okay. And it's like Clinton, mm, which Ooh. one? And he goes through and he's like. Well, you know, Hillary Clinton, she says, would have to overcome a lot of impediments to become only the like third. stairs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so she goes, you know, Hillary's got too much baggage. Bill? 
Uh, no, he's got too much baggage too. In, in today's sort of like post Harvey, you know Weinstein, the thing where people uh, think rape is bad. <laughs> so he says that leaves us with one Clinton, Chelsea. Why do we have to pick a Clinton? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Because the people of Arkansas still love the Clinton family. No, she they goes, don't. She goes <laughs> definitely don't. She goes. She has. The, she has the Clinton. because she, Hillary won Arkansas, as we remember. The, the, the Arkansas. Remember, people, when, remember when she won Arkansas in twenty sixteen? People. In a People in Arkansas have fonder memories of the Bin Laden family. <laughs> he goes, she has the Clinton name, but little of the Clinton baggage. <laughs> yeah, because she's she never done hurt, anything. She wouldn't hurt for name recognition or <laughs> campaign cash. <laughs> She's vice chair of the controversy magnet known as the Clinton Foundation, but emails released during the presidential campaign by <laughs> WikiLeaks and the State Department show Chelsea caught getting doing good, seeking to root out corruption by foundation officials and warning of problems with the Haiti earthquake relief. She's an Arkansas native, even though she hasn't lived there since she was 12. Sure, she lives in Manhattan now and lacks a southern accent, but her mom bought her first house in New York two months before she launched her Senate bid. We were talking about this earlier. The example of New York is like fucking a Awful. total red oh, herring. Yeah. New York State, people don't give a fuck at all if you live there. New York State treats politicians like the Yankees treat baseball players. <laughs> and, and we just want big names big to names. just come here big names. and represent we us. We had a Kennedy. Exactly. And yeah. we just want to, like as Matt said, we just want to think big names. They're like, we feel gratified that they come to us to represent us. Do you think they feel that way at all in fucking the Ozarks? <laughs> the, like, like I said, I was thinking like Chelsea Clinton is going to be campaigning uh, during, with, with the, the campaigning to the women who showed Jennifer Lawrence where her father's body is in Winter's Bone. She's going to be wearing a camo jacket and one of those hats with a broken brim. I want to see her try Chaw. <laughs> that yeah. would rule. Chelsea Clinton's campaign announcement, it's going to be her and her fucking moron hedge fund manager fail husband. <laughs> I love where, that, she, where, where, I love that, that she so literally failed. married. Yeah, yeah. She is Ivanka Trump. She literally married Jared. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. has her own Jared. She married a less attractive yeah, she Jared. Married, she married Jared without the powerhouse Jewish summer camp counselor <laughs> social charisma. <laughs> but their campaign ad is going to be them wearing overalls and playing a banjo and washboards. <laughs> But then she goes, let's talk better. Let's talk better pay-as-you-go measures for Medicare. <laughs> she goes, and I'm sorry, I just got to read one more paragraph here. Where Bill, Bill Sher, you fucking oh, Bill, rock, dude. Bill, I yeah. love you. Bill, yeah, oh, king, king. The new Bill Bradsky is Bill yeah. Shear. <laughs> he says, we all know she's gearing up to run for something someday. She sharpened her political presence on Twitter. <laughs> what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> She's released two books this year, the popular children's history book, She Persisted, and the less noticed but weightier, Governing Global Health, Who Runs the World and Why, in which she and a global public health professor explore how effective international organizations have been at combating infectious diseases. By Chelsea Clinton, featuring Professor Frank. <laughs> uh, that book is uh, this health professor just describing all the new diseases that were discovered on her mother. <laughs> 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 this article fucking rules. You know, I'm not even right. mad at this. I know, Bill Sure. Right, 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 now, right. now, now we're rolling kings. Yeah, pips. King. All, all pimps out there. Yeah. We started the Bill show. Bill Sher, you're the biggest pimp. We're, we're getting you back. We're getting you back. And there's a lot of despair in the first half. But guys, let's just have fun now. Woohoo! Let's have fun and talk about. Wait, wait, wait. Before we do, can we uh, can we just talk about that Chuck Grassley tweet? Oh, Real, no, 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 that okay. comment really yeah, briefly. Yeah. Okay, Chuck Grassley, the only person older than Nancy Pelosi. Well, the thing, I, the, the thing to to mention about that is because it's about this fucking tweet is about the the estate tax, which was uh, repealed completely, I believe, in the House in the House version, bill, yes, and will probably make it into committee because they really want to get rid of it. It's oh, like it's a, not controversial. Okay, yeah, this, no, this, they, was, they this hate, wasn't. But it. That's what's insane about it. How, that's the easy for me. The fact that you fuck up messaging on something like the inheritance yes. tax is the yes. biggest indictment possible. Because everyone hates rich kids. Yes, thank you. You're a piece thank of you. shit asshole who never lifted a finger, and then you get a bunch of money when your parent dies. It's it is repulsive. It doesn't even it doesn't even like even the libertarians who fixate on dessert theory of wealth and things like that. And well, you know, people those CEOs work hard. Well, they're shitty asshole kids. Sure as fuck don't. And we all hate them. Who's the bad guy in all the John Wick movies? 
It's not a mafia boss. It's a mafia <laughs> boss's shitty fucking kid. <laughs> yeah. every, that's true of every mafia movie, and every that, gang movie. That, the bad guy is always the shitty asshole kid who had everything handed it to him, never lifted a finger for himself, and that is every rich asshole's kid in America. They're so, they would be so easy to point them out and say, these people do not deserve this money. And yet... We are fundamentally incapable of talking about it that way. Part of that reason, by the way, is you have people like Bill Shear and an entire journalism class of people gormlessly and, 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 and totally taking in the idea that these, these dynasties are to be... You just expect, of course, these people's idiot kids are going to be brought into the journalism. Let's bring in Meghan McCain. Let's bring in fucking Ronan Farrow. Oh, hey, hey, is that Abby Huntsman at the door? Come on in. It's a party. You're a bunch of fucking witless dipshits who spent your entire lives like doing coke at your fucking private school and then Instagramming it. And now you're going to talk to us on the fucking national media? Of course there's no fucking um, vocabulary to point out that these <laughs> dickheads did nothing to deserve their status and, and that the money that they're going to get would be vastly better spent actually making people's lives better. Except if, Baron, defend Baron. Yeah, yeah, defend Baron. But, like, if David, if, like, there was a house fire at David Geffen's compound and, like, you know, a fucking, uh, you know, a, a plane crash or on Wall Street, a more ambitious one, and the entire donor class of the Democratic Party got wiped out and it became, like, a Corbyn party, you would win every seat in the house if you did something like you found every descendant of like the Johnson and Johnson fortune and went to Bushwick and went to their like performance art shows and said this is what this is what we're going to get if we don't tax I, inheritance he, well, 100%. Well, that's, why, that's exactly why I don't give a shit. Children are not off limits to these ruling class sickos. We should be attacking Megan McCain. We should be running ads showing the, the fucking psychopath Trump sons, not Baron, uh, Megan, Megan McCain, Chelsea Clinton, the cast of HBO's Girls, people who are widely reviled no matter who you are or where you stand in society, unless you're just an extreme partisan moron, and just say, these, this is, these are the people who benefit at your expense in society. They're getting hundreds of millions of dollars. That they never fucking work for. But, they, but we basically have decided to pretend that that you're taxing the de That's why they call I mean, that was the Frank Luntz idea Lunds, was right. the death this tax. You're being taxed at death. But you're dead. The money is you're no longer yours. It is going to a new person. And that new person is a spoiled piece of shit who's going to use the money to buy a fucking loft uh, in fucking Dumbo and just have a bathtub full of cocaine in it and another bathtub with acid to dissolve the people Demi who overdose on the cocaine and, accidentally. And that's the problem is Democrats will never, ever have the, the, the moral grounding to be able to make that argument when you have people like Joe Manchin in your caucus. Yep. Yeah, pimpin, pimpin. Joe, Joe Manchin, pimp. Pimpin. Let, let me just spit some truth. Let me just spit some truth right here, pimpin. Uh... Chuck Grassley, this is what he said. This wasn't a tweet, but this was a comment he made about the estate tax. He says, this was just today. He goes, I think not having the estate tax recognizes the people that are investing as opposed to those that are just spending every darn penny they have, whether it's on booze or women or movies. <laughs> stop, stop saying I just, Buster keep talking. <laughs> stop going to the Nickelodeon. <laughs> How? That is the oldest sentence I've ever heard. <laughs> movies. Spending money on movies. Uh, Millennials spend too much money on phosphates. You can, you can wait until the circus is in town next season. Too much, uh, too many of Mr. Graham's crackers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Now, if you excuse me, I have to go. Wait, you know what? Actually, he's right. Movies are super expensive now. And another thing, brain tonic is back in the form of <laughs> nootropics. We're in the super gilded age. <laughs> Holy uh, shit. This rocks, dude. My dad is John D. Rockefeller. I'm going to write my little fucking my little fucking diary that I tried smoking cigarettes and it wasn't for me. And my wife joined the temperance movement. I don't give a shit anymore. Let's, uh, let's have some more fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let's have some more fun and, and talk about. Let's talk about Jared again. Oh. King. Jared, finally, a man, Haim Saban, did the ceremony. Jared stuttered <laughs> reading the Torah. <laughs> Baruch Gatad and Oi. <laughs> Jared spoke. And again, and this, He's finally this, having this sex. Is, this is perfect because it gets back exactly what we were saying about like 
if, if only there was something the Democrats could do. It's just like, well, they had all these choices, and the one they made was to have fucking Haim Saban be Hillary Clinton's probably biggest booster. Haim Saban, this, owner of Deadspin. This is a shithead who just hosted Jared at the Saban Summit yep. and literally thanked him for what is maybe a violation of the Logan Act, which was reaching out to Russia to intervene in a UN vote about Israeli hold settlements. Hold on, hold on. I, you know what, to quote, Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. I'm not the sort of person who says a toto so, but a fucking a toto so. <laughs> Remember when we were talking about Russia Gate and we're like, Israel does this shit all the time? Well, 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 look who is violating the Logan Act on behest of Israel. I mean, who bitch. the fuck knows if, if he. If, look, Trump wasn't actually president when he when he made this overture to Russia, which is funny. But uh, I, I mean, I, it doesn't matter. So who cares? Yeah. I don't give a shit. But like, uh, I would just. Again, I would love to see Jared go to jail. Uh, obviously, yeah, that's but the only that's the only enjoyment we can even vaguely hope for. Yeah, I just I, so this is at the Saban's the Saban Forum, uh, brought to you by uh, the Bro- I'm permit Brookings. banned from that forum. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I, I'm I'm settlement stomper fifty eight. <laughs> <58. laughs> Uh, I, you beat me by a, a second. Oh, yeah, Jared, I, saw, I saw you reaching. <laughs> Jared uh, talked about because uh, you know he's our our special Middle East envoy. And special. He, his official title is Special Little Perfect Boy from the Middle East. <laughs> Chapo Middle East uh, correspondent. And he's going to personal friend of Felix He's going Peterman. to solve the Israel Palestine issue, and he said it's like a real estate issue. That's Which right, I, dude. It's Sykes like, dude, Sykes, I, I, Sykes Picot is just a bad zoning thing. You just got to pay a fat Italian but guy. Like, this is one of your favorite things, Felix. It's a real estate issue because Jared is going to just go to China and beg some billionaire to buy the West Bank. That's the best thing. So, yeah, Saban like, starts out by going, this is an endlessly impressive 36-year-old boy who <laughs> <laughs> gave up his interest in real estate to help us all. And it's like the only thing Jared has actually done is like he's like, I'm going to go to China to work on a deal. And he just... Spends his entire their time there per diem five thousand dollar lunches with like the sons of Chinese party officials and going please please buy it please buy it please and buy off- it. the ceilings off- aren't that offering, low offering offering green cards in exchange for fucking buying in the, his shitty building which is just breathtaking and something that is kind of astounding that we just kind of forgot with yeah him. he said, just uh, totally forgot uh, commenting on how Trump plans to deliver quote the ultimate <laughs> deal of solving the <laughs> Israel Palestine dispute <laughs> Kush- oh, yeah. Kushner said. Our goal is to go beyond signing a piece of paper into creating an environment that builds jobs and opportunities like never before. So Jared's going to bring Uber to (laughs) Palestine. He's the real hero of Palestine. Jared's going to get a PFLP pin, a vintage one. Oh, I love Jared. I mean, how do you not send him to fix the Middle East? A guy whose two jobs were borrowing $2 billion to buy a shitty building and turning the New York Observer into a coloring book. <laughs> I know that you said it as a joke, Will, but uh, China buying the occupied territories actually makes the most sense. It seems like the most feasible thing. That's probably what's going to end up happening. I, I yeah. mean, China should just take this whole thing over. I don't care anymore. President G seems like a fine man <laughs> if he's got some room for a podcast. Family man. President G, he, my co hosts aren't really hot. I'm moving to Iran, but I will accept China. He one belt, him. one road, one podcast. Yeah. President G, I respect you. I love you. <laughs> You're a pimp. You're a gangster. You're a big dick player. <laughs> You're a big dick player. All right. Wait. You guys you guys ready for some more pimping? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some more pimping? <laughs> okay. Here we go. We're, we're, we're having fun now. Okay. The Washington Post just came out with a hilarious account of Corey Landrowski's... Lewandowski. Or, Lewandowski. Fuck. Wait, it's okay. For, I only know Corey. that because I grew up in Chicago, which is just the most Polish people you've ever <laughs> seen in your life. This is Corey. Here are some words that rhyme with Corey, Corey. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they, they, they have a, like a highlight reel of his soon-to-be-released campaign tell-all book. And man, oh man, there is some funny shit in here. I was going to begin here. It says, uh, the article starts, Elton John blares so loudly on Donald Trump's campaign plan that the staffers can't hear themselves think. That's good. Press Secretary <laughs> Hope Hicks uses a steamer to press Trump's pants while he's still wearing them. Awesome. Trump screams at his top aides who are subjected to expletive-filled tirades in which they get their face ripped off. Caller. Cool. Cool. And Trump's appetite seems to know no bounds when it comes to McDonald's <laughs> with a dinner order consisting of two Big Macs, Jesus two filet fish and a chocolate malted. 
Jesus Imagine eating fucking Christ. four McDonald's sandwiches for dinner every All day. All right. This is uh, Matt and I were talking about this before. <laughs> More like, cubic yo, by yo, the day. Fuck, yeah. this, fuck this hell world. How is he still alive? How is Rich well, Biana? Well, <laughs> Rich Biana is dead, and Donald Trump is How alive. How is he still alive? How is his entire intestinal tract just not like anal beads, but they're tumors? How is that not <laughs> this everything is, inside of his body? He has this not is, eaten a piece of, like a, a single item of non-processed food yep. in probably 60 he years. Not, he does not eat fruit. He does not eat vegetables. The only reason he doesn't have scurvy is because of all the fucking ketchup that he eats. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. This is episode nine, 900 of More Presidential by the Fucking Day. So we're up bright and early at 6 a.m. Right now we're watching Fox and Friends. I'm going to walk over to the TV and thank them for a great TV episode. <laughs> fucking awesome. Great I mean, work. I love you guys. I don't know how you get in the fucking TV. All right. <laughs> right now I'm about to I'm about to eat my two McDoubles. These are morning McDoubles. They don't have cheese on them. Cheese is for later in the day after Jared tells you about a phone call with a Chinese guy he had that you don't <laughs> Don't pay attention to. <laughs> right now, I'm going to summon Jeff Sessions to the office and make him stand under a ruler. We have to have him admit that he's five foot six every day of his life. He can't. He can only keep doing racism if I humiliate him. <laughs> I mean, like, again, like I. If you if you can't if you can't laugh at this, then what the fuck are you? Remember doing? Yeah. Right? Like, when, there's nothing else to do. Yeah. Dude, you remember but, when Trump took his first flight on Air Force One, and there was this press gaggle around him. He's just grinning like an idiot, and there's a loud TV blaring. <laughs> yep, I remember just, that. Just at, like New York One or something, and just yep. daytime <laughs> news ads, and you just hear one eight hundred Empire <laughs> yep. call. Just, <laughs> so fucking loud, and yep. this is just all he hears I, all day. I, I, the line about he's El one of the bad children. <laughs> He's from Charlie his, and the Chocolate no, Factory. He's the son from Bad Santa. He's Lauren Graham's son <laughs> from Bad Santa. Just uh, 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 <laughs> She's Thurman Merman. <laughs> Thurman Merman, yeah. Just, and, Where he cuts himself <laughs> on the advent calendar. <laughs> Ow! Ow! No, he <laughs> cut himself. He cut himself trying to to whittle a wooden pickle <laughs> as a gift right. for Billy Bob Thornton. Sorry, sorry. Uh, frankly, I don't get it. If it's not edible, why would they okay. make wood out of Just, something? Yeah, the detail about blaring Elton John is like fucking almost famous. They're all singing "Tiny Dancer" on the plane <laughs> together. But okay, okay, this is the next. This is the next really funny bit about. Uh, about Manafort, where it says, uh, in a section of the book written by uh, Lewandowski, Trump is described as flying on his helicopter when he learns that Manafort has said Trump shouldn't be on television anymore, that's the cardinal sin, that he shouldn't be on the Sunday shows, and that Manafort should appear instead. Trump was angrier than Lewandowski had ever seen him, ordering the pilot to lower the altitude so he could make a cell phone call. This is him now. Did you say I shouldn't be on TV Sunday? I'll go on TV any goddamn fucking time I want. And you won't say another fucking word about me, Trump yelled at Manafort. Tone it down? I want to turn it up. You're a political pro? Let me tell you something. I'm a pro at life. I've been around, I've been, I've been around a time or two. I know guys like you with your hair and skin. Got well, yeah, guys, Got guys like you with your hair and skin. Uh, you know those weird things yeah, that guys you, like you uh, have? You weird son of a bitch with your <laughs> epidermal layer of protection to keep you from being damaged by weather, you weird bitch. <laughs> I just have a thin pink layer of slime from 50 years of eating McChickens. <laughs> You're down. fired. You're all fired. I'm hiring the co choir of dancing skeletons from a 1930s cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this oh, is, this is the sorry, president. This is, this, is, <laughs> this is the best follow-up line, though, when he said, I know guys like you with your hair and skin. Or when he said, I'm a pro at life. Lewandowski called it, quote, one of the greatest takedowns in the history of the world. <laughs> Uh, if you should Lewandowski a video of like a feral hog screaming at another over an apple, he would be like destroyed. What is the opposite? So like, there's always a joke. Somebody was cursed. Like you know, they ran over a Rome or you know a Roma, or they fucking like kicked a leprechaun. Thinner. Yeah. What is the opposite of that? Like, did he accidentally give a, a le leprechaun an orgasm or something? <laughs> <laughs> because he is the most charmed oaf. In the history of the world, he eats nothing but but charred gristle mm -hmm. and grade F meat <laughs> for seventy years. He has no cancers. 
he is nothing but fails and fucks up and loses billions of dollars and he just keeps getting it back winning dude, he's and a then winner. he becomes fucking good president. He, he's a pro oh, yeah. at life you know, and not just that not just that that Lewandowski thing is perfect because he's not even like just on his surface he's not like a clever or charming person in any way but just any of the insane stupid things he says like 30 percent of the country including Corey Lewandowski is like he is he's a wizard with words he's so cool but like just, he gets up there and he's like uh, you know what? I'm just going to say right now, Geraldo, we've had a turbulent relationship. And people are like, I'd fucking die for you. You're so cool. What's so amazing, though, is uh, that America, America's awful atavistic capitalism is propped up by I, this ideology of, of deserved wealth and, and, and the self-made man is, a, is this fantasy figure that basically justifies all manner of of grotesque inequality even if he doesn't exist the idea of the self-made man exists and because we don't want to stop that from happening that glorious miracle of someone rising from nothing and through their own guile and grit becoming rewarded with massive success because we want to make that possible we're willing to overlook devastating horrifying inequality and injustice and that the our president is the anti Horatio Alger. He is the guy who just fucks up repeatedly, is in manifestly incompetent and corrupt, and never pays for it. His entire existence repudiates the entire fantasy behind American capitalism. Yeah. And yet people just can't process it, I guess. So they just turn it around and be like, no, he's cl- he, he wouldn't have the money if he wasn't yeah. smart and good at his job. Uh, this the, that's country that's is. It's it's transparently a sham, but you know, fortunately, I think more and more people are realizing what a sham meritocracy is, and what you need is an actual political movement or structure that takes advantage of that. And you, you know just what? Don't have we, it now. we had a lot of despair today, but we I think we need to have a little bit of fucking sunshine and a little bit of of uh, of optimism. Chris, and play walking the, on sunshine. And it is the fact that we clearly are seeing a change in the way people think about this. Oh shit. yeah, we're clearly. seeing Seeing, like we were talking about after the off-year elections, how you're seeing the beginning of sort of a, a Bush era, post-2006, souring on national Republicans and a willingness of people to come out to vote against them. But this time, there were so many people who were getting brought in on that wave who are out socialists, who are genuinely purporting forth that class first vision that we said has been missing so it's coming back yes. we need uh, jezza we need you come over here king, king. yeah, yeah. No. Uh, i mean just, that's that's very true matt and you know obviously a lot of people are going to be swept in this wave and it's also going to be a lot of you know dnc d trip favored candidates like just stuttering veterans who talk about uh, means testing medicare and things like that so if you think that uh, and I and I hear people talk about this a lot. If you if you maintain this fantasy that that this rift in the Democratic Party is is anytime soon going to be bridged uh, not in time for 2018 or beyond, that's just not going to happen. One side has to win, and that's it. This country is uh, insanely stupid and probably doomed. But let's just jump <laughs> dive back into this article because it's really fucking funny. Okay, I goes. Uh, this is. Um, in another episode, uh, Lewandowski describes how staffer Sam Nunberg was purposely left behind at a McDonald's because Nunberg's special order burger was taking too long. Leave him, Trump said. Let's go. And they Power, did. Move. Power move. Oh, my God. Here he goes. Trump's fast food diet is a theme. On Trump Force One, there were four major food groups, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, pizza, and Diet Coke. The plane's cupboards were stacked with Vienna Fingers, potato chips, pretzels, and many packages of Oreos because Trump, a renowned germaphobe, would not eat from a previously opened package. The book notes that orchestrating the orchestrating and timing of Mr. Trump's meals was as important to any, as any other aspect of his march to the presidency, and it describes the elaborate of efforts that Lewin Dowski and other top aides went through to carefully time their delivery of hot fast food to Trump's plane as he was departing his rallies. Wet boy <sighs> loves hot fast food. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Father's food must be hot. Oh my god! Hot you know food, that's what's going to take him. That's what's going to take him down is probably a salmonella outbreak. I mean, him, after man. he puts the fucking Krusty the Clown in charge of the FDA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, felled by his own. Or the sword. USDA. You know what's amazing is that the other campaign was the most. It was the. 
Greatest collection of hyper ambitious psychos, and they had over a billion dollars. And yeah, the other people it really, were just really a, funny. We're just a bunch of guys who were taking Chinese off brand Cialis and giving <laughs> Big Macs to an infant. <laughs> <laughs> and the infant team won. <laughs> these people, since they were 12 years old, were thinking about their entrance essays to Harvard versus just all these dumbasses and the big, the big, <laughs> the big meal baby, the big fat <laughs> meal baby. <laughs> They won. They fucking won. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Well, oh man. I wish I could fuck me. I wish I could have been there to see the looks on their faces. <laughs> Dude, that would have been the only regret I have about our election night show is that we it didn't wasn't do it at, at the Javits, Javits Center. Center. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine seeing just this ice chewing psychopath who thought he was going to be like a State Department undersecretary when they're like, N -n the McDonald's guy won Wisconsin. <laughs> 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 the team. <laughs> <laughs> the, te the team of guys who can't go into Pep Boys because they said a racial sl the wrong racial slur to a cashier. They but, beat you. <laughs> but you know what, though? Fair and square, they did, but they were helped along the way because the GOP's own ice-chewing psychopaths had, made, had plowed the field for them by doing voter suppression That's in many true. states. That's right. And... and, and it, Decreasing turnout by by increasing voter ID laws and making it harder to vote, shutting voting voting places, and they were doing that with that clear. They were doing that with that clear eyed psycho intensity of any of these professional political operatives, and then it all went to the benefit of the fat orange idiot rolling down a hill in a giant barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Feinstein. <laughs> thinks that they're going to get him on an obstruction of justice case. <laughs> you, see the, you see the thing today where it like, he this man, this, this criminal genius. Yeah. Did you see oh, the thing he's today? like Walter White. <laughs> Did you see the thing today where he, he tweeted what many lawyers have basically said it is an admission of obstruction yes. of justice and then one of Trump's flunky lawyers just came out and said, I tweeted that. Which is an obvious <laughs> lie. That's amazing. <laughs> He has all the the dumbest, most selfish man who fucks over everyone who believes in him. He has a lawyer named Ty Cobb. Yeah. You know, that dude is batting 400, yeah. dude. Can you believe that no, shit? But, but it's like... But they didn't even fire that guy, which yeah. if... Oh, yeah, I tweeted something under my client's name that is an admission of obstruction of justice. <laughs> you should probably be fired, but he's still there, which you know makes me think he was just like, oh, I said it. I wrote the, th I wrote the Iggy. The I did the Iggy. That's the, <laughs> final, that's the final most amazing thing about Trump. Trump fucks over everyone who's closest to him. Like, he fucked over Christy. He fucked over Giuliani. Now this lawyer guy. And it's like there's no reason to, like, ride with him unless you're need to sell a shitty building but he's just, it just keeps people are still like no i want to be with this guy this untrustworthy petulant fat infant it'll be cool when that that lawyer says that under oath and just gets immediately disbarred and trump still wins the case trump, and trump's like i told you he was a fucking loser <laughs> <laughs> you fail he forgets that they made that deal he doesn't hold up his end of the bargain i uh, oh it's gonna happen so we're um we're almost over here. I mean, as a show and a society. But um, <laughs> I, I actually, I do want to close with like one, one just serious thought that like we've been hitting out. Like, obviously, uh, if you're feeling a lot of despair, like I, I share it with you. Because and like, I, it's getting harder. It, it, it's hard to imagine a, a way out of this in the near future. However, I, I do believe that the the majority of people in this country, if someone were to articulate a vision like you know if we had a figure like corbin who said you know rise like lions we are many they are fewer could articulate a vision that is contra to this like nightmare that we're living in i think people like i think there, there are more people than ever in this country that like that that is like the broad base of support for that it just it doesn't exist like the, the political infrastructure for that doesn't exist and that's, there are there are people that are like, we got to try to create it from scratch or, or just do something there are people i'm optimistic about like specifically carlos rosa in chicago running for illinois fourth district vote for carlos when the time comes but yeah you know like they I, can come out of nowhere people really can like, and yeah and in the in the absence of a leader, you need a movement. You need yeah. a mass movement. And yes. you know, and like and I said, it needs me, to like, be more than about elections. Here's the thing: like as as 
Uh, yeah, as, as Matt was pointing out, like the the people, the, all the assholes know this, and that's why they're trying as hard as possible to take you know make people's lives more precarious through their awful judges that are going to just infest our entire federal judiciary for probably as long as I'm fucking alive are going to make it just our democracy even more of a sham than it already is. They're going to, to, they're going to empower to the game facts, uh, message board moderators and disbarred magicians that Trump has <laughs> nominated the judiciary. John McCain rubber stamped every single I cannot one. wait for the viral videos about the Trump justices. Yeah. Street magician destroys pro-choice activists. Look, I don't know what that, you're talking like, about. I think that Logan and Jake Paul are going to break great <laughs> federal judges. Well, here, like, so like, we like we we described all this horrible shit that they're doing and that they're getting away with, but like they're doing it because they know how fucking like that that in a functioning democracy they couldn't do this. Yeah, right. And they're doing it to 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 hold on to just clamp down even more of the fucking power and money that they have because they know it can get taken away from them. Yep. And we have to. That's that's the only thing to do. And they're and they're gonna use the law and government. And money to make it harder and harder to do that, but like, again, just there are more of us than there are of them. I don't, I don't know what else to say, but yeah. uh, what That's, I will do. It's a start, at least. It's a start. So, I want to leave you guys now <laughs> <clears throat> with something that I think, uh, like I said, just really sums up um, just America and the and our, our culture. Honestly, like, if, our you, government if you right did, now. if you if like, there was like somebody. This, if there was somebody who was in a two-year coma who woke up and f- looked at what was around us and you know spent a good four or five hours in sputtering incoherent rage and f- terror and confusion and and they then said what the fuck happened I think you could sit them down and show them this commercial and it would really tell them everything they needed to know so uh, that's it for us this week. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, but until then, I give you Trumpy Bear. The wind whispered through the forest. A storm is coming. You cannot defeat the storm. From the trees rose a resounding voice. I fear nothing. I come when the trumpet sounds. I am the storm. I also come when the trumpet sounds. American Grizzly. Introducing the original Trumpy Bear. The this is going to be the tackiest concentration camp American ever. Grizzly. Trumpy Bear was born June 14th. American Grizzly? Isn't that the name of like, Just the find gay the bear magazine? <laughs> and pull out the flag blanket. Then wrap yourself in the red, white, and blue for comfort and warmth. Show your patriotism and proudly display I like Trumpy how they tell people how to use a blanket. And on any American <laughs> holiday, Trumpy can Hug even your little honor bear your family snuggle. heroes. God bless America, and God bless Trumpy Bear. Holy Trumpy shit. Bear sits proudly I'm a big at the boy. front of the motorcycle for all the world to see and loves You know how we said neoliberalism friend. makes everyone adult Marine, infants? It's I'm also nationalism. Trumpy Bear does ride that. by my side. Once a Marine, always a Marine. <laughs> everyone knows Trumpy Holy Bear shit. loves to go to the golf course. When I ride with Trumpy Bear, he makes my golf game great again. Thank you, Trumpy Bear. Simply style his trademark hair and place him in his favorite chair. Even the toughest guys will love Trumpy Bear. When America is great, business is great. When business is great, I am You can great. hollow him out and turn him into you, a Trumpy diaper. Bear. I am an army I'm telling my plush I'm animal to kill Trumpy Colin Kaepernick. Bear, and I will always you be can have proud sex with it. to be an American. Order the super plus Trumpy Bear for only two payments I'm of $19.95. I'm a grown man who has a stuffed animal that I carry around with me to trigger the lips. Don't miss out on owning a piece <laughs> of American history. Order now for only two payments of 1995. The liberal left hates my binky. Trumpy, the most fearless <laughs> bear anywhere. Order now. I'm sorry, the bear is $40. <laughs> well, I know what I'm getting you guys for Christmas. Two payments of 1995. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the bear, the, yeah, my bear got taken out by a Black Lives Matter thug. Oh, sorry, it's $28. I had one, payment, <laughs> one payment left. Till next time, guys. Bye-bye. Order your, your Trumpy bears now. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.